My name's Aaron Ralston. My parents are down on Larry Ralston of Englewood, Colorado. Whoever finds this, please make an attempt to get it to them. Be sure of it. I would appreciate it. Yes, close calls happen in real life. It's not only in famous movies with sci-fi effects. Some people have survived the incidents that sound too unrealistic. The stories we are going to talk about today might sound far beyond the logic. There are actually many real-life heroes who have endured mind-blowing traumas and hardships. When it comes to flight or flight response, these people have fought and they won. Let's see the luckiest people who survived the impossible. Number 6. Harrison O'Keen In one of the most shocking tales of survival at sea ever told, a man lived for almost three days inside a sunken ship at the bottom of the ocean. The 2013 story of Harrison O'Keen surviving the cold, torturous Atlantic Ocean 60 hours after a shipwreck is a triumph of the human will. It is also a story that O'Keen believes justifies his faith. Telling a story to UK news outlet The Guardian in 2013, O'Keen described his feeling when he was submerged along with the boat. It was around 5 a.m. and I was on the toilet when the vessel just started going down. The speed was so fast, so fast. All around me was just black and noisy. I was crying and calling on Jesus to rescue me. I prayed so hard. I was so hungry and thirsty and cold. And I was just praying to see some kind of light. As a diver's light approached, O'Keen hesitated to swim outside the air pocket in case the startled diver might use a jackknife on him. I went to the water and touched the diver. He himself shivered from fear. So I stepped back and just held my hand in the water and waved it in front of his camera so they could see the images above deck. Once Harrison had been located, there were worries he would panic during the rescue. While his body had absorbed potentially fatal amounts of nitrogen, his heart wouldn't have been able to pump back on land because it was full of gas, said Christine Cringe, medical director of the Plymouth-based Diving Disease Research Center, who advised the rescue team. O'Keen was strapped into diving equipment, then led to a diving bell which took him to the surface, where he spent two days in decompression chamber. To survive that long at that depth is phenomenal. Normally, you would dive recreationally for no more than 20 minutes at those depths, said a training consultant from the Professional Association of Diving Instructors. O'Keen said they told me all the others had died, and I cried when I thought I was the only one who had been trapped in the boat. Despite suffering from nightmares and peeling skin, daily helpings of his favorite banga soup dish, a fish and palm fruit soup, have helped him feel much better, he said. Number 5. Aaron Ralston Climber Aaron Ralston found himself trapped alone in the Utah Canyon and had to perform DIY surgery to save his life. He was entombed in the wilderness of Blue John Canyon, carrying a small rucksack of just one liter of water, two burritos, and a few chunks of chocolate. He had headphones and a video camera, but no mobile phone, and there was no reception anyway. Most foolishly of all, he had not told anyone where he was going. He eked out his water, futilely chipping away at the 800-pound rock and slowly entering a state of delirium, until he was eventually forced to cut off his trapped arm with a small knife from the cheap multi-tool kit. I very, very little water. My body's having difficulty controlling its temperature. I'm in deep stuff. He had just attended the London premiere of 127 Hours, Danny Boyle's film about his extraordinary escape from certain death. When his blunt knife pierced his skin but came to rest against solid bone, Ralston thought he had no chance he could perform the gruesome amputation that would save his life. But he did it, and for six days, Ralston kept himself alive with fierce self-control and conviction that only logical thought could let him survive. The entire process took an hour, during which Ralston lost 25% of his blood volume. High on adrenaline and the sheer will to live, Ralston climbed out of the slot canyon, rappelled down a 60-foot sheer cliff, and hiked six of the eight miles back to his car, all while severely dehydrated, continuously losing blood and one-handed. Four hours after amputating his arm, Ralston was rescued by medics. They believed that the timing could not be more perfect. Had Ralston amputated his arm any sooner, he would have bled to death. Had he waited, he would have died in the canyon. And I wasn't even attached anymore, and I fell down like this, and I... I, uh, I I was free. Number 4. Helen Cloben Helen Cloben wanted to travel from Fairbanks to Seattle and decided to save money by flying with an amateur pilot, Ralph Flores. It turned out to be a fateful choice when Flores's plane crashed on February 4, 1963, in a snowstorm in a remote part of the Canadian wilderness. The passenger and pilot suffered broken bones and other injuries, but they were alive. Unfortunately, they had no survival equipment except for matches, and their food supply consisted of four cans of sardines, two cans of tuna, two cans of fruit cocktail, and a bottle of vitamin pills. To deal with nightmare temperatures that dropped as low as negative 41 Celsius, 
They fashioned a blanket from the plane's carpet and stuffed clothes into the cracks of the plane's cabin to insulate it. They used gasoline from the fuel tank to light a campfire. After a week, their food ran out, forcing them to survive on melted snow, water for breakfast, water for lunch, and water for supper, as Clovelin later explained to Life magazine. Fortunately, both passenger and pilot were overweight and could survive off their body fat for another 42 days until an aircraft finally spotted them. Number 3. Jose Salvador Alvarenga On November 18, 2012, Jose Salvador Alvarenga expected to embark on a 30-hour fishing trip. The weather had other plans. A huge storm hit, leading Alvarenga to dump his equipment and head back to his home port of Chocohita, six hours away, which would have been a good plan until his motor died 15 miles off the coast. With no motor, they rode out five days of storms that wound up depositing them 280 miles offshore, thus beginning a journey over a year, fighting starvation, thirst, and the sun. The sun during the day made it feel as if they were being cooked alive. During the cold nights, they would climb inside the icebox and huddle for warmth. Thirst had become an obsession, as had starvation. I was so hungry that I was eating my own fingernails, says Alvarenga. Eventually, they were able to stay alive by catching and eating sea turtles and birds. His one crewman died along the way, and Alvarenga struggled with isolation. For a time, he kept his former friend's body to talk to, but on January 30th, 2014, he finally came ashore on a bond atoll on the tip of the Marshall Islands. Number 2. Truman Decan While most people don't survive being run over by a train, Truman Decan did. In June 2006, Dukin was working at his job in the rail yards of Claiborne, Texas, when he slipped and fell on the tracks while riding on the front of the train car that was moving towards a repair dock. Dukan was pulled under the rail car, its wheels grinding steadily underneath. It just felt like a monster, he said. I couldn't get away from it, like it was just pulling me in, and I'm pushing away, and I was cut in two, he said. By the time the rail car came to a stop, Dukin had been dragged 75 feet. His lower body was still entangled in the wheels of the train, and he was cut nearly in half at the waist. With one leg attached by a single muscle, he knew he had to fight to stay alive. I knew if I just lay there, and lay there, and lay there, eventually I was gonna die he said, but if I stayed awake, made sure I got help, then there was a possibility that I would live, and that's when I realized that I might have my phone on my hip. He reached for his cell phone and called 911. He lost half his blood, but when he was delivered by helicopter to the hospital over an hour later, he was still alive. According to one of his doctors, he was torn down to just literally one cell layer of tissue between his abdominal contents, his intestines, and the outside world. Dukan lost his legs but survived the ordeal. Number 1. Ganell Guzman McMillan On the morning of September 11, 2011, Ganell Guzman McMillan was at work at her office on the 64th floor at the World's Trade Center North Tower when the building was struck by American Airlines Flight 11. As she later recalled in a newspaper interview, at first there wasn't any smoke or fire. The company she worked for told her to stay put and wait for help, but after an hour she decided to head to the stairwell. When she descended to the 13th floor, Guzman McMillan bent over to take off her shoe, and then suddenly, a wall collapsed on her. Her feet were pinned, with her head trapped between two pieces of concrete. The only thing she could move was her left hand. She opened her eyes, but everything around her was black. Time seemed to stand still, and she remembers praying for a respite from the pain. After 27 hours, she heard the voice of a man named Paul, telling her to remain calm, that rescuers were on the way. Guzman McMillan had been spotted by one of the 300 search and rescue dogs deployed after the disaster. She was the final living person rescued from the wreckage. Guzman McMillan tried to find Paul afterward to thank him, but no one knew who he was. Do you believe in fate? Let us know in the comment section down below. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on your post notifications so you never miss a video from us. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.